Hi guys, welcome to Tech Based. In this video, we're going to talk about the latest Windows 11 25H2 preview build in the dev channel and also the beta channel because both the dev and the beta channel have received the same build, which is the build 26220.7051. As I've said for version 25H2, and if you are on the dev or the beta channels, you're going to get the same build. I think this window will be opened for quite a while, maybe a few weeks. So this is the perfect window. If you want to switch from the dev channel to the beta channel, you can do it right now just go into the windows insider program and then you can switch up your insider settings the window is not opened right now but i'm sure that it will be opened in the near future as microsoft is releasing the same build to these two channels talking about this build we have quite a few new features and one of them is pretty big and of course we're going to cover everything in this video so if you enjoy videos like these please don't forget to leave a like below and also subscribe to the tech base channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one so let's begin with the video. First of all, Microsoft is adding the Ask Copilot in Taskbar. They are basically replacing the search box in Windows 11 with an Ask Copilot button that it can use to either search in your operating system or Ask Copilot and use Copilot Vision and more. Fortunately enough, Microsoft is not enabling this right away, so you're gonna still see the classic search box, but if you wanna enable that, you're gonna have to right click on the Taskbar, go to Taskbar Settings, and then you're gonna have an option here, Ask Copilot. Show Ask Copilot also changes search and Copilot key settings. If you enable this, you're going to see that the search box will be transformed with this button, Ask Copilot Anything. You're also going to have the share screen with Copilot, basically Copilot Vision, and also talk with Copilot shortcuts inside this search box. Also, you're going to notice that the Copilot key will now open the Ask Copilot button. So if you click on Open Copilot Key Settings, that should redirect you to Bluetooth and Devices, Keyboard, and then you're going to have this section, Customize Copilot Key on Keyboard, which is what happens when you press the Copilot key. So you can switch things up from here if you want, you can also add a custom app. Now let's see how this Ask Copilot search box thing is working. Basically, if you click on it, you're going to notice that this will pop up and here again, these two shortcuts will be available from here and the Copilot icon. Also, the search box will be transformed into a pill that has a loading animation. And now let's type in here something. So for example, we can type an app. We have store and it's going to load up Microsoft Store, storage settings and more. And also you can click on show more search results, which will automatically search that in the classic search box that you can still access from the start menu. In addition to this, we're going to see that some options will include Ask Copilot. For example, store, you can ask Copilot or stores near me with unique home decor items. Basically something pretty random, a recommendations. If you click on this, it's going to automatically open up the Copilot app. It's going to type in here store and basically Copilot will start to talk with you. And as you may have guessed, you can just click on the Ask Copilot button and then Ask Copilot anything. It doesn't have to be really related to your system or computer. For example, what are the main Windows 11 features? And then just press enter. It will automatically open up the Copilot app with the question that you've just asked and Copilot will answer to you in a few seconds. As you can see here, it automatically categorizes the main Windows 11 features for you. I think this is a pretty useful thing if you wanna use it and if you want to have AI at your side in every aspect of your Windows 11 day-to-day -day use. Other things that you can do with this, you can open up Copilot Vision and basically share your screen with Copilot. And as you can see, this is how it looks basically. And then you can select the screen that you want to share with Copilot. Of course, you have to be connected with a microphone inside your operating system. And then you can select the screen, you can share it, and you have different options. You're going to have to talk with Copilot and Copilot will try to help you based on whatever you're speaking. And also, you're going to have a quick link to settings if you don't have your microphone set up in your system. And this will basically open up the all sound devices section with your microphone that you can configure if you want this. Microsoft is also announcing that they are slowly rolling out a feature where you can also type using Copilot Vision. So you're not going to need to talk with Copilot necessarily. And uh, basically, whenever Copilot Vision opens, you're going to have an option to uncheck start with voice. Then you can just type whatever you want Copilot to explain to you based on whatever it is on your screen or whatever you share. So basically, this is part of the announcement that Microsoft made a couple of weeks ago that was named every PC will become an AI PC. And Microsoft is introducing this inside the operating system. The good news is that it is not automatically enabled on your system. So you're going to have to manually enable it if you want to have it and if you want to use it. But still, if you want to test it out and experience it for yourself, I'm sure that it is not that bad of a thing. I think the search thing is pretty fast. You can search for different apps pretty easily if you ask me. But still, I think I would 
prefer the old search box because I don't like AI that much personally. Of course, I use AI here and there, but I don't want it to be implemented in every part of the operating system. This will basically create more problems. Uh, you're going to have to be connected to an internet connection that will be mandatory. And it is whenever you install Windows 11, if you don't do any workarounds. So of course, I look forward to seeing your opinion about this in the comments below. Will you use this new Ascopa search box that Microsoft is introducing? Microsoft is also introducing the full screen experience related to Xbox. It is expanding its availability to additional Windows 11 handheld devices that are currently on the market. We're going to have the Xbox PC app that is paired with the full screen experience alongside with smooth task switching and optimized performance. And you're going to be able to find settings for this inside the settings section in gaming. And here you're going to be able to see a new section which is called full screen experience. And then you're going to be able to customize this from there. On Copilot Plus PCs, Microsoft is previewing the shared audio feature that is built on Bluetooth LE audio broadcast technology. And it basically allows two family members to watch movies together while traveling or two students to share music while studying. To get started, you just have to access the shared audio preview tile in quick settings, select to support the paired and connected accessories, and then click share to begin. And of course, if you want to see more information about this, you can check out the official Microsoft blog post for this new feature. Related to Press, which is the Microsoft's emulator for Windows on ARM64 devices, Microsoft is enabling the feature update to this, and this makes it possible for more 64-bit applications to run under emulation by adding support for more CPU features under emulation, and I think this is uh, great news. Talking about some fixes in this build, a general fix, Microsoft fixed an underlying issue leading to keyboards or other USB devices not working for a small number of insiders after the latest flights. Related to the start menu, Microsoft fixed an issue where interacting with a folder or its contents in the start menu could result in the folder becoming invisible. Related to the file explorer, Microsoft made some underlying changes to help responsiveness of file explorer when navigating in network locations, made some more underlying improvements to help reduce the launch time of file explorer, fixed an issue where open in file explorer's context menu wasn't showing the right icon for .exe, .cmd, or .bat files, and it was just showing a generic executable icon instead of the default app for that file type. They also fixed an issue where you might see your desktop icons move when interacting with files, such as opening or renaming them, and they also fixed a couple of issues where tooltips were not showing up as expected when using navigating home with a keyboard. Related to lock and logging screens, they fixed a memory leak when your lock screen was set to slideshow, which could lead to performance or reliability issues over time when unlocking your PC, and they also fixed an issue which could cause logging in to be very slow for the first time when logging in into a new account. Related to settings, Microsoft fixed an issue where the search box in settings could become overlapped with the minimum and maximized buttons in the tile bar. Some other fixes, they fixed an issue where after the latest update, screen readers might unexpectedly say legacy window without reading out the window contents when interacting with certain apps. Fixed an issue where after the latest updates, text might not render correctly when editing content within a multi-line text box in certain apps. Fixed an issue where protected content playback may fail on some machines after the latest updates. And finally, they fixed an issue which could cause Ethernet upload speeds to be significantly lower on some PCs after the latest updates. Also, the good news is that we have no new known issues in this build, so in that case, we are good to go. For more information about this build, of course, you can check out the article below or the official Microsoft blog post. If you want me to make a video which I'll show you how to enable the new Ascopod search box, please let me know below in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like below and also subscribe to TickBase channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one. I was Emmanuel from TickBase. Until next time, have a nice day.